good morning dear students in today's lecture we will continue with the concept of viscosity of the liquids we very well know that all liquids possess the property of flowing and we find that some of the liquids flow very easily as compared to the other liquids for example water ether flow very rapidly whereas liquids like honey glycerin they flow very slowly this indicates that each and every liquid is having some internal resistance to flow and this internal resistance to flow possessed by a liquid is known as its viscosity now the liquid which will flow slowly will have high internal resistance and they will said to be more viscous liquids whereas the liquids which flow rapidly and have low internal resistance they are said to be less viscous liquids they will flow easily now what is the cause of viscosity for this we suppose there is a narrow tube and a liquid is flowing through that tube now what you will observe the all parts of the liquid they do not move through the tube with the same velocity you will see the layers which are close to the wall of the tube they are slower as compared to the layers which are near to the center of the tube for this imagine the liquid to be made up of a large number of thin cylindrical coaxial layers now the layer which is in contact with the walls of the tube will be almost stationary its velocity will be very very low whereas as we move towards the center of the tube you will see the velocity of cylindrical layers keep on increasing till it is maximum at the center this is all shown in figure by the arrows that the velocity is increasing as we are moving from wall towards the center of the tube so each slower layer which is having less velocity that will offer some resistance to the layer moving adjacent to it so it will retard the motion of a fast moving layer adjacent to it and that will be responsible for the internal resistance of the liquid as you can see suppose this layer is having the velocity v cm per second then the other layer which is at a distance of x cm and that is at the center of the tube is having velocity v plus small v cm per second so velocity is increasing from uh, this position to this position as we are moving towards the center of the tube so this internal friction between the layers of moving liquid is the cause of the viscosity of the liquid now what are the various factors on which the viscosity of a liquid will depend first one is the intermolecular forces of attraction as the intermolecular forces of attraction will increase the viscosity of the liquid will increase as the internal friction between the layers increases on increasing the intermolecular forces of attraction second thing molecular mass of the liquid as you increase the molecular mass of the liquid the internal friction between the layers will increase because of increase in forces of attraction and this will result in increase in the viscosity of the liquid so these two first and second terms are directly proportional to the viscosity of the liquid now third one is the temperature as you will increase the temperature it will weaken the intermolecular forces of attraction so it will decrease the viscosity of the liquid so temperature is inversely proportional to the viscosity of the liquid now fourth one is the pressure with increase in pressure intermolecular forces of attraction between the molecules will increase and it will increase the viscosity now it will increase to a small extent the reason being the liquids are less compressible so the effect of pressure is very very small 
so how we can define the viscosity the force of friction which one layer of the liquid will offer to the another layer of the liquid moving with a different velocity will be known as viscosity of the given liquid now what do we mean by coefficient of viscosity the internal resistance to the flow of liquid is measured in terms of a tangential force which we call as force of friction between the layers and this force of friction will depend upon the following factors first of all this force of friction will be directly proportional to the area of two liquid layers in contact with each other more is the area of contact more will be the force of friction between the layers second thing it will be directly proportional to the velocity difference between two adjacent layers so more is the velocity difference between two adjacent layers more will be the retardation caused by the slower layers so force of friction will be directly proportional to the velocity difference third one is it is inversely proportional to the distance of separation between two adjacent layers so smaller the distance more is the force of friction now we can say that this force of friction will be directly proportional to area into dv by dx as it is directly proportional to the area of contact velocity difference and inversely proportional to the distance of separation between two adjacent layers now taking constant of proportionality eta we are having f is equal to eta a dv by dx or we can say this eta is equal to f by a into dx by dv this constant of proportionality is known as coefficient of viscosity and this is given by this expression where f is the force of friction between layers a is the area of contact dv is the velocity difference and dx is the distance of separation between the layers now from above equation if dv is equal to 1 cm per second dx is equal to 1 cm a is equal to 1 cm square then force of friction will be equal to coefficient of viscosity as we can see here this a dv and dx all are put equal to unity then we will have eta is equal to f so we are having eta is equal to force of friction when all the terms are unity so how we can define this coefficient of viscosity it may be defined as the force per unit area required to maintain a velocity difference of 1 cm per second between two parallel layers of liquid which are 1 cm apart now what will be the unit of this coefficient of viscosity if you are taking the cgs units we will have force in dyne area in cm square dx in cm and dv in cm per second so we are having eta is equal to dyne's second per cm square in si units its value will be newton per meter square into meter by meter per second so we are having this equal to newton second per meter square so these are the units of coefficient of viscosity now the cgs unit for eta is also known as poise where one poise is equal to 1 dyne second per cm square and this poise has been derived from the name of a pioneer worker poisely in the field of viscosity that's why this unit has been named as poise now one si unit of eta will be equal to 10 poise in actual measurement unit poise is found to be very large if you are doing experimental measurements you will see this poise unit is very large to measure so the measurements are done in the smaller units these are taken as in centipoise or millipoise so generally we use the units for the uh, measurement of viscosity that is centipoise or millimoles millipoles now what do we mean by fluidity of liquids it is actually the reverse of the viscosity so reciprocal of the coefficient of viscosity is known as 
fluidity and it is represented by the symbol phi where phi is equal to 1 by eta where eta is a coefficient of viscosity so fluidity is what it is the measurement of the age with which a liquid can flow and units of fluidity will be reverse of coefficient of viscosity and that is equal to poise inverse now next one is the effect of temperature on viscosity you will see with rising temperature viscosity of a liquid decreases because of decrease in intermolecular force of attraction or you can say increase in velocity of the molecules so with increase in temperature the intermolecular forces of attractions are decreasing and kinetic energy of molecules increasing and this results into decrease in viscosity and the decrease in viscosity is about 2% per degree rise in temperature now the relationship between viscosity and temperature was proposed by a scientist named arrhenius in 1912 and this equation is given as eta is equal to a e raised to power e by rt now taking natural logarithm of both side we are having log natural eta is equal to log natural a plus e by rt and converting it into log 10 we are having log 10 eta is equal to log 10 a plus e by 2.303 rt now plotting this log eta against 1 by t we will get a straight line with the slope that is e by 2.303 r and its intercept will be equal to log a here a and e are the constants for the liquid and t is the absolute temperature now this e is known as activation energy for the viscous flow it is the energy to be given to one mole of the liquid sufficient to overcome forces hindering the flow of liquid so the energy given to one mole of liquid which is sufficient to overcome the forces that is known as the activation energy the plot of this log eta versus 1 by t is a straight line with slope e by 2.303 r from the slope of this line we can easily find out the activation energy and if we are knowing the activation energy we can find out the viscosity of the given liquid by using this equation so this is all about the effect of temperature on viscosity in the next topic we will take in the next lecture